guys, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. Today I have something kind of special for you. I rarely get excited about radios, but I ordered this Baofeng UV25, and it is a big beast. It is heavy, durable, and it offers additional power, and it has one very cool feature I'm going to cover today, and that is a scramble feature. It's not encryption, but it can give you some level of privacy, and I thought it was really cool. There is actually three different Baofeng radios that can do this, and I will link them in the description of the video if you want to have this feature. So without further ado, this is the Baofeng UV25, the box that it comes in, and let's pop it open. In the box, you got a manual, a very large battery. This thing is 38 watt hours. This thing is a beast. I've actually had that one running for two days straight. And I still have about 8 volts in it. It is still pretty much at full battery according to the meter. So this thing can run like a week without needing to be recharged, which is really cool. So if you guys are preppers and you want something that's going to last a long time, this is probably where you want to go. Um, one thing I do not like about it is it is not officially waterproof. But, let's pop the radio out here. It does have some gasketing on it to keep the water out. Um, I would not take it submerged or anything like that. But getting caught in the rain or anything, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So let's get all this out of here. It comes with the radio, the battery, this earpiece that we are definitely going to throw away, and this tether that's not going to do you any good. And the belt clip on this, I'm going to show you guys this. This is just goofy. This radio is like a pound, it's like 1.3 pounds or something. This clip would die under the weight of how big this radio is, but I put it on here just for the video. Kind of funny, you're never going to use the belt clip. It does come with this tactical foldable antenna, which I'm going to show you on the test meter, is no good. This thing sucks for UHF, so if you're guys that aren't ham licensed and you're primarily going to be jumping on the FRS and GMRS bands, this tactical foldable antenna it is terrible for UHF, and it is definitely no good for MERS. And we'll throw it on the tester and show you guys. However, this gooseneck antenna that it comes with, that one tested pretty much at a perfect 1 to 1 SWR, which if you guys know radio antennas is basically perfect. You really can't get any better than that. And on the MERS, we'll test it. That one tested pretty good. I can't remember. I think it was like just under two. We'll throw it on the tester for both antennas, but this antenna definitely works really good. It comes with the charger and cable that you know, typically anything's going to come with. So this is the radio. We'll pop the battery on really quick. It screws into place, unlike a lot of Baofeng radios. So... Two flathead screwdriver slots right there. We'll tighten this up. And I pre-charged the battery on this so I could do a real-world test. And we'll pop the screen protector off and turn this on. There's your favorite Chinese Baofeng lady telling you welcome to the radio. So let's get on a GMRS channel. And I'm going to turn the power down on this because this thing really does put out a lot of power. We're going to show you that in one second. But one thing I want to start with is this scramble feature. Before I go into the scramble feature on this radio, there's going to be commenters who say this is illegal and it, it shouldn't be done. And the FCC is going to come kick your door in in the middle of the night and arrest you and shoot your dog. I don't know how legal or illegal it is. You're not supposed to mask your voice 
or do encryption on GMRS, but this is just a voice scrambler, so you guys can leave it up to you. Leave all your crazy comments about how the FCC is going to raid your house or whatever. It doesn't matter to me, but this is a cool feature that you could use in times of emergency if needed. I probably wouldn't use it all the time. So with that being said, let's continue. So the scramble feature is off on this particular radio here, and it is on on this one. So we're going to transmit to that and just show you what it does. Testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. So you basically can't understand anything. But, and this Baofeng radio, which I will put the name on on the screen because it doesn't show it on the radio, but it does the same thing. It has the scramble feature also, and there's also like one or two more that I, like I said, I'll put in the description. So let's turn that scramble function on on our new radio. Menu. And it is menu item 45 in this, and it's got three different modes of this scramble function. So if you have one scramble mode one on this and scramble mode two on on this one, it will sound funny. So just for the purpose of the video, Confirm. we're gonna do mode one for both of them. This is a typical UV5R and it's on the same frequency. It has no scramble function. So we're gonna show you what it does. So any radio without this scramble function is not going to be able to understand what you're saying. So it gives you some level of privacy, which I think is really cool. Okay, so we're going to do a demo with both radios um, running the scramble feature. And you'll see there's a little SCR on the menu when you do this. That way you know when you're using it or not. And you'll see this is really simple. We're just going to transmit to this radio. My radio that I'm going to have is going to have it on, and that one has it on, and they'll sound normal. Testing, testing, one, two, three, scramble mode. So now let's do a power check on this. This one's totally charged up, and we're going to see how many watts it actually puts out. It's advertised at 11 watts. I don't think you're going to get 11 watts out of UHF, but we are going to find out. On the VHF bands and stuff, I, I'm sure it'll go a little higher, but this is what you're going to get on this radio. This is on GMRS, fully charged battery. This is power on low, UHF, 2.3. Let's do medium, mid power. We are going to get almost 5, 4.77. And let's go to high power. The other one did about 9, 9.1. I haven't tested this one yet, so I'm assuming it's going to be close. High power, UHF. 8.55. So on UHF, it's putting out over 8 watts. So that's pretty good. Um, your typical 5-watt radio is going to put out about 4.8. So really, this thing is about double the power of a typical handheld. And that will actually make a difference. Okay, so let's do an SWR test. This is a test to see how well the antenna functions with the frequency you are transmitting out of. Let's go to... SWR, and per the instructions of this, I'm going to hold this and go. So 1.29, 1.1 is perfect. This is, after I'm holding it for a while, but it's really good. That's like 1.5. The other one's actually a little bit better. That is a really good SWR for this gooseneck antenna. But let's do MERS. So this is going to be a VHF band test with this antenna also. We are on a MERS frequency, which is VHF, not UHF. Let's see how good the antenna does with that. So actually not that great. The other one I have does a little better than this one, but that's not horrible. You could transmit MERS on this. So this is a MERS frequency, and this is MERS, the first channel in MERS. 
and I'm actually getting a really good SWR. And then when you go up, interestingly enough, it gets worse. So four. So MERS-1 is probably the best, which is kind of weird. You always get weird stuff like this when you're dealing with radio equipment. So let's do UHF again. This is in GMRS. Let's do an SWR with this tactical foldable antenna that we have here. I'm not a huge fan of this thing. So pretty bad for UHF. That's our main transmitting. That's where most of us preppers are going to be transmitting. We're going to be using UHF like GMRS and FRS. Let's try MERS. This is the fifth channel in MERS. So one to one on the MERS with the tactical antenna. So if you're doing VHF, these are actually better. Let's go to first channel in MERS. Test it one more time. So actually the tactical antenna is really good if you want to do VHF. So you could always just carry both with you. So let's get ready to test these radios. So for this test, I have a home repeater. It's an MXR10. It is on about a 35 foot high pole. So at home, my wife is right next to the repeater tower, if you will. So she doesn't need to be outside or anything. She was just outside for the video. It's not radio to radio. It is through my repeater. That makes a big difference for reception on our end and transmit power from the home. The places I chose to transmit from with the handheld are particularly difficult places in my town to transmit from. That's why I chose them. I wanted to see if this radio could actually overcome something that a normal handheld wouldn't. So that's the test. We are in particularly and on purpose difficult spots. All right, key up and call me back. I'm trying to uh, capture this. Sorry, go one more time. I had to shut another channel off on my radio. Say that one more time. Key up and call me back so I can get this film. Coming through loud and clear. Bye. Right, I'm gonna go to another location and try you from there. Check one, two, three. Let me know if you can hear. Me. Can hear you. Just do it one more time, please. I moved out of town. I am in way more of a rural area at this point. Radio check, radio check, one, two, three, testing with the Nagoya antenna. Let me know if you can hear me. Radio check, radio check, one, two, three, testing with the Nagoya antenna. Let me know if you can hear me. I want to make a quick mention of your typical UV5R radio. This is the 8 watt version. It really only puts out about 6 or 7 watts. And from the second location that was almost six miles away, this radio was unable to connect to my home repeater. Let's wrap this review up here. All in all, this is a really cool radio. It is a big, heavy, chunky, tough radio. The front of this is actually metal. And one other cool feature I want to talk about is it goes right to your weather channels. So we're inside. We're not going to pick it up. But it has all 10... NOAA channels pre-programmed into it with one touch of the button and that is really cool to have. Um, I really do like that scramble feature. Again, it's not encryption, but making it harder for people to understand what you're saying at certain times is going to be very helpful for you. If you have a fleet of radios that you've given out to people and you want to have a private conversation and you know that only two or three people are capable of that, that would be good to hand to the people out that you want to talk to privately over the radio. It can also be helpful for the person who might be trying to listen to your conversation who doesn't have one of these radios, or even more likely doesn't even know how to use the setting, won't be able to understand you.
the UV25 actually does connect right up to Chirp. So it's Chirp compatible. You can go right in there and you can program the radio right up to however you want it to be. I would upload MERS, all your GMRS stuff, and all your local frequencies that you want to listen to, including your GMRS repeaters. So big thumbs up by me, big tough radio with a ginormous battery that will literally run for days, and it's USB chargeable, which is really neat. So all in all, really cool radio. If you're a prepper and you're into comms, this is definitely something you might want to pick up. It comes in just about $65. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.